the scientific community is comprised of human beings and human beings are subject to the same pressures, money, prestige, promotions, all that kind of stuff. So it is not impossible to influence or bribe scientists. The food pyramid was a psychological operation. The food pyramid was known to be BS from the very start. And there were some brave scientists who stood up against it even at the start, but they were silenced. And of course, the media, government, and the companies promoted the food pyramid knowing full well that it was BS. So I don't believe that you should be somebody who blindly trusts science. Science has been co-opted before and will continue to be co-opted by big business interests. Another example is the sugar industry. The sugar industry literally in the 1960s, I believe, paid off Harvard scientists to say that carbs good, fats bad. And that's where the whole, you know, fats are bad ideology comes from. Companies have succeeded in paying off scientists before, which is why I believe we need to look more broadly, not just at the science to understand what is good for us. Because understand this, I have this system. I call it the PSYOP system. Science, S, I, intuition, O, observation, and P, philosophy. And I use this system to evaluate what is true and false in my life. And I can share that with you. So we talked about the science. Now I'm gonna hit you with some philosophy. Science gives us facts and observations. It doesn't tell us what we should actually do. Should belongs to the realm of philosophy. Understand this, we use the system of innocent until proven guilty in courts. But when it comes to our health and when it comes to adding new alien substances to our diet, which could harm us and the health of our kids and our families, we should use the principle of guilty until proven innocent. So understand this, thousands and millions of years, humans have gone without polyunsaturated fatty acids, this is a new addition to our diet, which industry has created for us. They might be good, but it's on them. The burden is on them to prove that it's good. The burden is not on us to prove that it's bad. You understand the burden of proof lies with the people who are creating this stuff to show that it is harmless and good for us, which they have failed in doing. For me, I'll happily say that this is guilty until proven innocent. So when the science is a toss-up, I will avoid these newfangled inventions and defer to tradition. So that's your philosophy. Observation. Now I'm going to talk about observation. What have I experienced in my own personal life when I switched over from seed oils to saturated fats? Well, one thing, skin quality. So understand that the skin is made of cells, like your entire body is made of cells, right? And cells have a membrane around them. And this membrane is made of fat literally the fats that you consume will incorporate into those membranes. So if you use good fats, that will incorporate into the membranes. If you use unstable fats, that will incorporate into the membranes. I, I saw my skin go from, you know, I had pimples and I had acne and all this stuff, become clear and healthy. And, you know, I have... I have no complaints at all about my skin nowadays that I switched to seed oils. I also have a, a very powerful esoteric skincare routine. So if you want that video, let me know in the, in the comments. Do you know what a country club is? It's where elites hang out and you're not invited. If you're subscribed, you're likely interested in the esoteric health movement and also the multiple psyops inflicted upon us. If you want to learn directly from me and also meet fellow people just like you who are interested in esoteric knowledge, then you should consider joining the Carl's Country Club. Another observation energy levels. So like I said, the skin cells have membranes which these fats will incorporate into. Every cell in your body has mitochondria and mitochondria is the powerhouse of cell. I know everybody knows this. So mitochondria also has a membrane and if you have unstable fats in it, it messes up the energy system which is why you feel slow and sluggish if you had seed oils. Most people know it as vegetable oil. We in the know know it as seed oil, but the industry term for this stuff is RBD oil. That's refined, bleached, and deodorized oil. That's the stuff which they have convinced you and your family that is good for you. You know something's wrong with a product when the company literally spends millions upon millions of dollars on marketing to convince that, that their product is better than what we had traditionally. If the polyunsaturated fatty acids were the miracle they claimed it to be, it was cheaper and better for you, then they wouldn't have to spend so much on this fraudulent marketing campaign, this psychological operation, in order to make you buy it. The free market would have selected for that product. But no, here's what they did. Here's the psychological operation. 
You've heard of the American Heart Association. You probably recognize the logo. Do you know that that organization is completely, completely bought and paid for by the seed oil industrial complex? That's right. So what they did in the 1960s, I believe, they literally had this radio campaign and it was a lottery system. So a company wins a prize from Procter & Gamble which at the time, and even today, is probably the biggest player in the seed oil industry. So they had this radio contest, and the American Heart Association just happened to win it, completely by coincidence, I'm sure, and they were pumped with $19 million by P&G. And do you think there was a conflict of interest? Of course there was. So in a few years, you know, the American Heart Association goes from being underfunded to massively funded, and literally every single piece of propaganda they put out is in favor of the seed oil industry. Is that a coincidence? I think not. The reason why a lot of people believe that polyunsaturated fatty acids are good for their heart, literally the AF AHA's logo has a heart picture on it. It's because they make the claim polyunsaturated fatty acids are good for the heart, which is a claim that is, in my opinion, fraudulent, at worst, faulty at best. Today you're going to learn everything you ever wanted to know about cooking oils, seed oils, all that stuff, what you should be using, how you should cook your food for both better health, better skin, and better testosterone levels. And if you're a woman watching this, keep watching because this is not just about testosterone. Your hormonal levels are equally important as men's and these seed oils affect you just as much as they affect us. And along the way, you learn how to make amazing chicken drumsticks sauteed in duck fat and it's gonna taste amazing. Right now, I'm gonna lay some foundations. I'm gonna teach you the terms I'm going to use for the rest of this video. So if you've heard of polyunsaturated fatty acids, you've heard of saturated, you've heard of monounsaturated. What are these and what are some examples? I got them all right here. So there's three types. There's the saturated, monounsaturated, and polyunsaturated. And I'll break it down super easy for you. So the solid stuff, solid, think of it, it starts with S, right? Solid is saturated, is stable. That's what you need to know. So like butter, butter is literally solid, right? You're not gonna be able to run a fork through butter. It's a solid, it's a saturated fat, and it is stable at all temperatures. That's butter, highly nutritious, you should cook with this. Here we have ghee. Ghee is also pretty solid. Like you cannot, you know, just run a fork through this. This is a saturated fat. It is stable. It's a solid, SSS. Then we have duck fat. It looks like it's more liquid, but it's still like kind of solid. Like you can see the bottom is pretty solid. It's a saturated fat, very good, highly temperature resistant, doesn't oxidize in high temperatures. You should cook with this. Then we have olive oil which is a monounsaturated fat. So we were talking about saturated fats, SSS, stable, 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 and now we're coming to a liquid. So this is different. This is different. Now we have monounsaturated fats. This is a oil, of course, olive oil. So what do I mean by monounsaturated? It means it has one unstable bond, one double bond, which is inherently unstable for organic chemistry reasons, which I'm not going to go into in this video. So should you cook with this? Yeah, you can. Because it has only one unstable bond, it's still resistant to oxidization and olive oil naturally contains a whole bunch of antioxidants which also help it resist oxidation. So it's pretty stable. I don't have any problem cooking with olive oil. I approve. Now we have the bad guys. So we have here is sunflower oil. It's almost like water. It's not very thick at all. It's pretty light. It's not viscous. And then we have also sesame oil. So these are your PUFAs, PUFAs, polyunsaturated fatty acids. So poly means many, mono means one, which is where the olive oil comes from. So polyunsaturated fatty acids, it means it has many unstable bonds, many double bonds in the carbon, ad, uh, carbon molecule structure. So these ones, I don't recommend you cook with. These are unstable, they're not resistant to oxidization, and I will not cook with these. I know a lot of people do, I do not recommend it, and we'll go into more details, but that's the basics. Now before I uh, take too long with all the science stuff, I want to get my dinner cooking. So here we go. This is how we will prepare this. Okay, I'm just gonna dump these guys in here. We got some chicken. Now what you want to look for with chicken, ideally you want pasture raised. If you have cage free, that's fine too. The reason 
why that's true is you don't want grain fed. Quite often the grain feed which they give to these chickens is moldy and mold releases something called ZEA which is a estrogenic substance. So you don't want your chickens to be eating moldy grains. So you should go for pasture raised. And also let me explain what I'm going to put on these before I cook them. So this recipe which I'm doing is with duck fat. You can use ghee, you can use butter, you can even use olive oil, no problem. But I'm going to use duck fat. So we were talking about unstability and why that's important. Here's why. So when those double bonds in the carbon structure gets disrupted by oxidation processes, it can lead to the formation of something called aldehydes, which is a class of organic compounds. Aldehydes, one of them for example is 4-HNE, is literally a known carcinogen. So when you oxidize some of these oils, you literally create cancer-causing substances to form in those oils. That's why I would never cook with polyunsaturated fatty acids, PUFAs, seed oils in other words. So I'm just adding my duck fat right onto the raw chicken and you can eat this stuff. It tastes good. So I'm putting that away. And now I'm going to essentially add all the spices. I'll tell you which spices you need, which spices you don't really need, and what's the easiest way to make this stuff. So first, I'm going to add salt. That's the main thing. Salt is indispensable. You need salt. A lot of these people, like the mainstream health types, they think salt is bad for you and it's going to cause hypertension and whatnot. It doesn't. It's actually pretty good for you. And if you're an athletic person, you absolutely need salt as a part of your diet. So how much salt am I adding? Like I don't measure these things. You know how other cooking channels will literally measure like at an at an autistic level, like how much salt they're adding? I don't. This is how much salt I'm adding. You have a camera, like just make your own judgment, right? Uh, okay, adding the salt. We're gonna rub all this stuff together anyway, so it's fine if it's not evenly distributed at this point. Right, so I said before that you should not be heating seed oils. Understand the process by which seed oils are being manufactured. So in the start I said seed oils are, are, are called RBD oils, right? Refined, bleached and deodorized oils. Understand that each of those processes is a high heat process and these oils shouldn't be subjected to heat in the first place. For example, the process of deodorization. You, so what, what's going on here, right? So most seed oils are toxic or are inedible in a natural form. For example, canola oil, or it's called rapeseed oil, is literally toxic straight out of the plant. Like even if you have the best extraction techniques and you only use cold pressing or expeller pressed, canola oil is still toxic. So canola oil is a no-go, like you should never have it under whatever circumstance. And then the refining process, you subject it to a process called deodorization, which removes the bad smells from this product at a temperature of 500 degrees Fahrenheit which is more than sufficient to oxidize and make this stuff literally... Well, I don't want to make claims I cannot prove, so I don't want to say that it's a carcinogenic oil, but it has been proven that these oils, upon heating and reheating, do form aldehydes such as 4 h &E. So you can make out of that what you want. I personally will never touch canola oil. Coming back to here, so the chicken. Add some garlic powder. Oh fuck, that's a little bit too much, but it's fine. Turmeric, we have ginger powder, and you see how generous I'm being with all this stuff? It tastes good, so why wouldn't I be? And also I have cayenne red pepper, so this is, so the other ones, I would definitely recommend you add them. The red pepper is optional for sure, it's going to add a lot of spice, so if you don't like spice, don't add any cayenne red pepper, because you're going to add actual like ground pepper anyway, so you don't need this step. I personally like it with a little bit of spice, so I'm okay with adding a small bit of cayenne pepper. That's more or less what we need. So I won't add the pepper right now, because if I heat this, this pepper just burns. So I add the pepper at the end, actually. I've already added everything I need for this. Probably not enough, though. I'll, I'll mix it up and I'll see. I'll make my judgment. And if the oxidization issue wasn't bad enough, look at what these oils and fats are stored in. If you notice, Olive oil often comes in these dark glass bottles. Why is that? It's because first, olive oil is expensive and people expect quality from olive oil. So the manufacturers put them in glass bottles to prevent oxidization. You understand oxidization can be caused not just by heat, but also by light. That's why the dark glass bottles. And then of course, the saturated fats, they're already in glass, so that's fine. I have no issue with that. But look at your seed oils. Almost all seed oils are packaged in plastics 
And here's the problem. The plastics contain either a bisphenol, so BPA, BPS, BPAS, BPF, different kinds of bisphenols, which are all highly estrogenic substances which mess up your hormones in a terrible way. That's one thing. But even if somehow they had a plastic which didn't contain BPA, which is unlikely because this is the cheapest kind of plastic, it would still contain phthalates. And phthalates are also endocrine disrupting. I would be very surprised indeed if any seed oil came in plastic which was free of those. I would say it's impossible. It's unlikely. So here's what's happened. Estrogenic substances, all of them, are fat soluble. That is, they dissolve in fats. They dissolve in oils. So when you store these oils in a plastic container, what do you think is going to happen? The estrogenic substances are going to seep into the oil and estrogenics are not destroyed by heat. So when you consume canola oil, grapeseed oil, sunflower oil, mustard, sesame oil coming from these plastic containers, you are consuming estrogenic substances. You are. There's no question about it. That's another reason why you should prefer the saturated fats or olive oil in your cooking rather than the seed oils. So you want to heard the term called trans fats. And by the way, it looks like I didn't season my chicken enough, so I'm going to add a little bit more. Um, trans fats. You've heard of the term trans fats. You know the trans fats are bad. But you know there was a time in which the science and the media, everybody was saying that trans fats were good and you should have more of them. So understand that Procter & Gamble is a massively wealthy company. So here's what they did. They took seed oils. In fact, they took cotton seed oil, which is one of the worst seed oils. They took cotton seed oil, which is an industrial lubricant. It's literally used to oil machine parts. It's not fit for human consumption. And they subjected this oil to something called hydrogenation. Later on, they come up with something called partial hydrogenation, but they subjected it to something called hydrogenation, which causes the substance, this liquid, to become a solid. All right? And they give it a name called Crisco. Crisco. It comes from, get this, crystallized cottonseed oil. Crisco. And this stuff is toxic. It's literally made of trans fats. No human or animal should be consuming this stuff. But their marketing campaign was on point. They convinced everybody that trans fats... Now, understand something about trans fats. Trans fats don't exist in nature. Or they exist in trace quantities only. No living species is equipped to deal, to deal with trans fats. And Crisco was sold you know, to moms and Kids ate this stuff. Like, no human should be eating this stuff. Or Procter & Gamble, they said, fuck you, give me money. So they literally forced, or didn't force, but, you know, used their marketing wing to sell this stuff, which literally even an animal should not be eating. That's the story of Crisco. So I, the reason I bring that up, so if trans fats have now almost been banned. You can barely use trans fats. But the story I want you to focus on, so trans fats, the scientists said it was good, the media said it was good, it turns out it was bad, all right? Polyunsaturated fatty acids, PUFAs, again, it's the same story. The scientists said it's good, the media said it's good, but the emerging research is showing that it's not good at all. And, and this is a whole story about cholesterol. So in the, 90, like the late 1900s, right, there was a huge fear about heart disease. I believe President Eisenhower... I think he died of heart disease. So the, the question of heart disease was on everybody's mind. You know, how do I prevent heart disease and all this? So the American Heart Association, which I talked about before, they come out and they prove that the lower cholesterol means lower heart disease risk, which is not a claim which I actually believe in. What happens then? They find this link that polysaturated and fatty acids reduce cholesterol. So there it is. You know, literally thousands and millions of Americans bought into this stuff, and not just Americans, obviously. Worldwide, Procter & Gamble is a multinational, multi-nation company. Massive profits from this fraudulent marketing campaign. I'm also going to add bay leaves, which is optional. I'm just adding it because, you know, I have them. You don't really need this for this recipe. I'm adding some star anise, and I'm adding a stick of cinnamon. Because I want this meal to be S-tier. You don't really need all this stuff. You can make a perfectly good chicken drumstick with half this stuff. You only really need the pepper and salt. Everything else is optional. So I'm going to give this a nice rub one last time. And you have two options on how to cook this. You can either do it on a stove top and that's fine. But I'm going to put it in the oven just because it's easier. 
And besides, why do I have this? What kind of soap are you using to wash your hands? Check your ingredients list. If it contains ethyl or methyl paraben, you need new soap. As I wait for my chicken to get made, there's a few more things I want to talk to you about. So should you never have sunflower oil or sesame oil? Not necessarily. So I was talking about the extraction processes. There's other kinds of extraction processes which are much less common. You can find sunflower oil or sesame oil from expeller pressed. So it'll say on the bottle, expeller pressed or cold pressed. And that's fine. If you, and if you use those, I have less of a problem with those polyunsaturated fatty acids because they haven't been destroyed by these high temperature processes. So I would still not use them for cooking, but I could use them as a drizzle on something else. And same thing for sesame oil. Sunflower and sesame oil are not the worst. The problem with these is the processing and the refining. With things like cottonseed oil, corn oil, soybean oil, and even uh, canola oil, these, even if they were expeller pressed, I would highly not recommend them. These two are a little bit different. And what about avocado oil or mac macadamia nut oil? Yeah, these are fine too. Avocado oil, olive oil, and macadamia nut oil are actually monounsaturated, so you can use them to cook if you wanted to. Let me check if this is done. All right. Here's a tip on how you should use your oven. So if you have an oven, you have a broil setting. So to make chicken easy, instead of setting, you know, the temperature and the duration and all that, you just put it on broil. You wait for it to have this browning and charring. You flip him and then you put him back. It's that easy. You don't need to sit there and try to find out like what temperature is ideal. This is the superior method. All tastes good. Oh yeah, it has the kick. I know my seasoning is on point, boys. In it goes. I'll let it be for a couple more minutes. We talked about science, philosophy, observation. That still leaves us with intuition. And this may be the most controversial or important thing in this video. My intuition, I, I used to think, I used to defer to science. You know, the science is, is what they say, then I'll believe the science. I don't believe my intuitions. I was that kind of guy. Not anymore. Nowadays, I trust my gut. I trust my instincts. I trust my intuition about everything, including diet, including interactions with people, including you know, the choices I make, the videos I make, all that. I do trust my judgment because I'm in a better place now. I have good mental health, I have good physical health, and I have no problem with trusting my judgment because judgment comes from evolutionary wisdom programmed into us over thousands and millions of years. Why would I not trust it? So what does my intuition say? I'll give you a short story. So I was doing my research for this video, and one of the videos I saw on YouTube, which is actually pro seed oil, the presenter of that video, he made an interesting argument. He said that in online right-wing groups, everybody there hates seed oil and they, they love saturated fats. And the reason why these right-wing online guys, masculine, toxic masculinity type guys, hate seed oils is because they associate meat with the hunt and the hunt with war. And all these are right-wing topics that is associated with toxic masculinity. And then these guys hate seed oils because seed oils are you know, bird food and birds are effeminate. And that's why they hate seed oils. And that's why they love meat and dairy products because that comes from the hunt and then farming and all the masculine stuff. And he used this as an argument for seed oils. He said, we shouldn't be toxic masculine and we should prefer the seed oils because the science said so. We should just trust the science. It's interesting. When I saw that, I was amused because his little story about, you know, the right wing guys and the toxic masculinity type guys preferring saturated fats because of their association with the hunt, that appeals to me. I don't care what a random YouTuber has to say, who wants to call me to toxic masculine. That's fine. I don't care. That story appeals to me. To my intuition, it feels right. Humans were a hunting species. We were pastoralists. We literally made this stuff for thousands of years. This is the new stuff. We didn't have freaking seed oils thousands of years ago. This is newfangled. This is tradition. My intuition says this is the healthy stuff. So the science is a little bit iffy because the predominant government sanctioned consensus is that seed oils are good and saturated fats are bad. So the science is 50-50. I mean, I would, I would even say the science is actually in favor of seed oils if you look at all the papers. So you can make, if you want to trust the science, you go right ahead, buddy. The science, the philosophy. The philosophy says, suspect 
new inventions until proven healthy. So the philosophy is on the side of saturated fats. Observation, my observations, saturated fats are the winner, clear as day. Then we have the intuition. My intuition says saturated fats are the way to go. Your intuition might be different. And for all those reasons, for the science, philosophy, intuition and observation, I prefer saturated fats and monounsaturated fats over seed oils any day. Now time to check up on my chicken. Let's see what happened here. I'm gonna grab these out and I'm gonna finish my chicken with a little bit of, where is that, duck fat. I see that it's getting a little bit dry. So I'm gonna rub some duck fat on it before it gets too dry. And then I'll put it back in for a little bit more. So we've already established the seed oil's bad, saturated fat's good, that's fine. But how do you actually avoid them? Because they are everywhere. You don't understand. Just by making better buying choices doesn't make you safe. So yeah, you could just buy the better ones and cook in your home. But literally every single fast food uses reheated seed oils. All of them, all of them use reheated seed oil. You think chipotle is healthy because they have like rice and chicken, but that chicken was cooked in seed oils. And, in, and it's not just seed oils. There's hundreds of different examples. Candy bars, snack cakes. I actually have a little list of things which seed oils are present in. Snack cakes, chips, margarine, cereals, dressing, ranch, fake meat, most candy bars. Mayonnaise is basically just soy, soy oil and it's emulsified. I'll make a list, I'll put in the description all the stuff you should be avoiding, but I think I've made my point. Avoid seed oils, go for saturated. So I've gotten my chicken out of the oven. So uh, it's been in the oven for about 10 minutes. So that cooks the chicken completely. So it's all fully cooked now, all the way down to the bone. But I like the char and the, the skin to be nice and burnt and tasty. So what I'm gonna do now is take my duck fat again, grab a new spoon. I'm gonna finish it off on the stove top. So this cast iron is like really hot. So I'm gonna have to be careful with it. Take my stove top and I'm gonna get it to medium high. So just between medium and high. It's gonna take a little bit to heat up. So in that time, I'm gonna get my duck fat. I'm gonna do, this is my third tablespoon of duck fat, by the way, if you're counting. And you might be thinking, oh my God, this is so many calories. Doesn't matter. If you're having a good, healthy lifestyle, which involves a lot of walking and jogging and running and working out in the gym, etc., calories are easy to burn, man. It's hard to gain weight. If you eat the right foods and eat the right fats, it's actually hard to gain weight. It's hard to get fat. Human beings aren't meant to be fat. That's the most unusual thing. It's so sad that in the modern day, being fat is the normal. It's actually really hard to get fat. Think about it, in, in caveman times, you, you would really struggle to get fat. Even if you tried, you would fail. So here we are in a modern world in which getting fat is the normal. There it is. That's the color I want to see. This is the stuff I want to see. All right, I have my plate of chicken right here. Ah, I'm gonna just take a, take a bit of it because it's really, really, really hot. Oh yeah, perfection. Look at it, see how, see how much duck fat is coming off of it. That's fine, that's the good stuff, saturated fat. That's what I want to eat. And like I said, saturated fats are stable in high heat. So this is mm, too hot, too hot. Yep, I'm gonna go ahead and enjoy this amazing, amazing chicken. It's an exclusive community where I will give you three live lectures per week and delve into the heavy topics so I can give you an unfair advantage. You'll also meet people just like yourself who are unsatisfied with the common wisdom and seek out esoteric knowledge. Each month, you get a free mini course on topics like strategy, YouTube growth, testosterone boosting, etc. chosen by popular vote by the people inside this group. We'll have a library, a book club where we meet weekly and discuss forbidden texts. We also have a kitchen where I teach you exactly how to cook good high quality testosterone boosting, hormone boosting meals. We'll even have a movie hall where I intend to watch along with every member of this group high Tumos movies like 300, Fight Club, etc. along with my commentary on the art and history of these movies. And finally, of course, we have the gymnasium where we shall contemplate the ideal physique. And on every Friday, we have Physique Friday. So what do you get as a benefit? You get early access to all my YouTube videos 
you get prizes. So school.com has a leaderboard where you can win prizes for your contributions to the group. And I will mail you actual physical prizes, books, super tonics, other things which I find interesting in my life. I'll send them to you as a reward for good contributions. You get hormonal health and YouTube growth strategies from me directly. Right now, I'm only looking for 25 members to start the foundations of this esoteric health movement. If that's you, check out the link in the description below.